Papa. Yourself, Welcome to How's the going? Mind Society, Papa. Pleasure to be here, Welcome. Papa. Welcome. John Paul, welcome to the Mind Society kitchen. As far as portable kitchen goes, it's rocking. There's going to be very few people that don't know who you are. Introduce yourself. Let us know exactly what we're going to be doing today. We'll get straight into it. Start cooking right away, man. Yeah, my name is John Paul Dargan. Been a chef for 25 years. <laughs> Bit of experience. I just want to make something very simple that anybody can do at home. And very quickly, very cheap. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a little crab cake. We've got some uh, crab meat here. And we're going to make that with potatoes, which I love, being Irish. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do a little garnish. Very simple garnish with some fennel that's in season at the moment. Some shallots and garlic. Give it a little bit of flavor and some spring onions. And we're going to season that up with a little bit of lemon zest. Then we're going to do some spinach. Just a little bit of vinegar in our water for the poached eggs. A little bit of olive oil and some cream for our spinach a little bit later. We've got a little panay station set up here as well because we're going to crumb our fish cake once we get it ready. So that's just a simple uh, mix of flour, which is seasoned with salt and pepper. A little mix of egg and milk. This is a breadcrumb mix. Panko breadcrumbs are usually best because they got a little bit of texture and stuff in them as well. Nice. Follow those three steps. Flour, egg, crumb, and then into a nice kind of shallow fry and uh, vegetable oil. Beauty. Get a nice crispy skin, and then we'll put them to the side, and then we'll start our spinach after that. What are we calling it? I think we're going to call this COVID fish cake. Let's get started. Okay, well, we're going to start with our potatoes because obviously they're going to take the longest, right? So we'll get them in the pot. Always start your potatoes with cold water as well because we want them to gradually come up to heat. And we get a little bit of salt in there as well. Get a pinch of salt in there. How long does the do the potatoes typically take? To, well, we've cut them cook? cut them nice and small, so from cold, I reckon about thirty minutes. This whole dish should take around thirty to forty minutes. Beauty. Okay. We're using the whole COVID nineteen kitchen setup here. We've got the camping single stove uh, burner, and then we've got the modified two burner top. Nothing but class here. Man, this is this high is tech. legit. <laughs> this is like the highest of tech. You've been in the cafe game for ages. What makes a perfect poached egg? It's all about the pot, temperature of the water, and the person obviously who's poaching as well. What about the vinegar myth? Oh yeah, it's true, man. Is it? Yeah, it's so true. You gotta have vinegar and water. The vinegar. No, and no salt. I heard it was just a myth. But... Yeah, no, it's true, man. It's Is true, it? Yeah, it's I... what uh, helps the egg white bind together and holds the actual egg in place. So, no yeah. wonder I can't poach poke. <laughs> You've been doing this all these years. <laughs> we can't give you vinegar. tips on that. I was like trying to prove it wrong, and then yeah. my poached eggs always came out like hard boiled oh, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'll I got. I'll give you a lesson today, man. Yes. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm gonna pull up a chair here. You just got back from the Mediterranean. How was that? What were you doing out there? I was lucky enough to get a job working on a, a super yacht, traveling mm. around the Med for three months. So started off in Spain and Barcelona, which is one of my favorite places in the world. And we went down um, towards the south of France, Saint Tropez, all those beautiful little places. Got the shop for all my own stuff. No real budget either, so I was just oh. buying all sorts of all Man. sorts of madness, <laughs> fresh morels, chanterelles, stuff that you just can't get here, you know. We had to schedule it all out, so feeding about up to 10 people on the boat. How big was your crew? 25 crew all together, yeah. but in the kitchen, just the two of us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Two so, of you. Yeah, just Three meals. It would depend. Sometimes the owner would take off for a couple of days or go out for dinner, go out for lunch on certain oh, days. Yeah. Yeah. So we had some free time as well. So I've seen places that I could never imagine I would have ever seen, you know, especially accessing them by boat as well. Yeah. Where'd you go in Barcelona? I really love like the Gothic quarter of Barcelona. So yeah. much history there, you know, and the food scene there is just amazing. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. I love the tapas bars. I love the, the vibe to it, you know, the late nights. The drinking fino, you know. That's and that's how we met about ten years ago. That is, man. Uh, that is. You were a sous chef at a Spanish restaurant in the city. I was fresh, fresh off the boat. I ended up getting a job like part time there. You showed me so much about food, about Spanish food, molecular gastronomy, which you guys were doing a little bit of that. I learned a lot about wine, yeah, uh, cool. Spanish wine, European. It was an amazing experience there, and we got to know each other a lot better. Mm. We lived in the same area. Whenever we would we'd head back. We would uh, find, our, for a find, <laughs> we'd find ourselves locked in to, to parse it in, on Chapel Street, actually. That's right. You remember Corey used to look after us? That's and right, he used yeah. to lock us in yeah, there. Yeah, we had a few friends <laughs> yeah. in the industry, didn't we? 
Yeah, still do to this day, you know. How did you get into Spanish food? Initially in Ireland, I worked at um, a place called the Tannery in Dungarvan, and we had a Spanish chef from Barcelona actually who came over and took a job. Come over, couldn't speak a word of English. We just won a big award for the best restaurant in Ireland, so we were kicking goals in a very small town. This guy came over and he used to walk around with his English dictionary. We'd go to the pub and have a Guinness, and he'd be sitting there with his dictionary trying to translate words and That's stories, cool. you know. But he was an absolute inspiration for me. Um, as far as cooking goes and at the start I didn't really understand much about it or right. what he was saying or what he was trying to get across but his skills like simplicity you know yeah. were done to an absolute tea. He taught me so much as far as like the basics went and traditional ways and you know through those years and learning those basic skills we've been able to kind of replicate that in a modern kind of take as well. Yeah like 10 years ago when I first got here in Australia it was like Span like Spanish food was Yeah massive. it was going crazy it was huge, wasn't it? Yeah. It was huge. Yeah, Spanish food is so versatile as well. Yeah, so many different ways you can go with it, you know? So many different influences from all around Europe. Rustic, modern, everything, you know? The same motion. I like this one, but this is a blend. I just got this today from Carwin Sellers. I've never had a blend of mezcal before. It's always been single state. Check out the dude, though. They got the dude on there, the mezcal guy. He looks. He looks borracho. He is borracho. He is borracho. Loco borracho. <laughs> but um, this is really cool because they like showcase the actual um, distiller. And uh, I've had one of their other ones before and it was just something, it was something special. Jane isn't drinking right now, so this is very weird. Yeah. Am I Irish or what? <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, what the hell is going on? Your ID. Yeah. Mm. Mind Society Boys. Can you guys pan away. to you? No, you can't pan to you, hey. No, that's got us. Oh, it's got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are, these, is that these me? Are the, this, these are the magicians right here. These are the dudes right <laughs> Make here. It, making it work. Making it work. These are the guys. Okay, we're just gonna sweat off our shallots. Nice hot pan. Back on the heat. So a little bit of olive oil. Nice and slow. Start it off high and then we'll get it nice and slow. That nice kind of roasty rich flavor out of the shallots and garlic, moving it around. Okay, we'll just put that back on the heat. I'm gonna add some butter to that. Okay, I'm gonna add my fennel in now. It's a little bit soft. Butter's got like a pretty high burning temperature, so start it off in olive oil, make sure it's nice and soft. And then we add the butter just to soften everything, turn down the heat. We'll season that a little bit with some salt and pepper. Cool, we'll just turn that heat down a little bit more. That's perfect. So we'll just let that stray away. Our potatoes are ready here, so I'm just gonna take these off the heat. I'll strain those for you. You made, you made your way over to San Sebastian, right? Yeah, that was probably one of my favorite parts of Spain, Bar Barcelona as well. You can just throw them straight back in there, Papa. Uh, we're gonna whisk that up, Papa. Just break it up a little bit, and put a little bit of seasoning in there. Yeah, I went to this little kind of pincho modern uh, place in San Sebastian itself uh, called El Frigo Negro. And they were kind of, at the time, they were taking over the world. They thought they were anyway, as far as molecular gastronomy goes. Really? I'll just throw a little bit of olive oil in there. Just five yeah, so it was all kind of like little, little tapas style, like one bite. And then we went back into the restaurant and then we had another course in the kitchen. The guys were like cooking away and they cooked the course in front of us. It was like a foie gras lollipop, very El Bulli style, but it yeah, was yeah. unbelievable. One of those dishes that just stands out. Do you take some of that inspiration and bring it to your kitchen, or is that something that you just appreciate and then... I think, like, yeah, I mean, you take a lot out of it. Obviously, it's very hard to replicate. Every time I go out, I always try and inspire myself and, and take ideas from different things. Yeah, so what we're gonna do now with our papa, we're gonna add our crab meat. Yeah, we can just give that a little mix in. That's in. Maybe that little spatula will be the job. Let's give it a good whisk with that. Yeah, just fold it all through, make sure it's nice and mixed. And we'll just let it cool down a little bit before we kind of shape it into the, the fish cakes that we want. And just let that stew away really softly, gently. A little bit of caramelization that we got there is really nice. So we'll let that cook down for another maybe 10 minutes. So putting it in the fridge, like will just help the, the cooling. Yeah, just let the temperature come down a little bit, but you know, it's not too warm in here. So we'll just let it sit there for five minutes. Then we'll add our herbs to it. And then we can shape it, pan it, 
and then we're gonna pan fry it. So I'm just gonna get this sauce ready. Just add our spinach to it last minute. Oh snap. Technical difficulties. Self-service. It's not my first big rodeo. Yeah, it is. That's good. That's what I'm touching. It is. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Feels nice. I just want to flick your Feels nice being touched every once in a while. I like that. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> It's me again. Your favorite chef. It's time for your treatment again. Do you have like gloves? Okay, it's time Oof. for your treatment. Guys, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add our herbs to the fish cake. So again, spring onions, the tops of the fennel chopped up, and some lemon zest. Zest of two lemons. So this is gonna be enough for four people, possibly five. Get all that goodness in there. Combine all good. that. Oh, that smells amazing. This is the stage where we want to take these, nice and caramelized, nice and soft. All the flavors came out. So we got that onion, we got the fennel, we got the garlic. Just going to add our cream. Coles. <laughs> it's number one. Number <laughs> one. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless plug. It's about 300 mils of cream in there. Let's bang on. That looks okay. so good. Rough measurements, nothing is a science. In. It's quite stiff, we're gonna mold it. You don't need to add any cream or any milk or any eggs to this. Let's get a little taste. I reckon that's pretty good, Papa. It's got that nice kind of aromatic. That is delicious. Fresh, zesty, herbaceous. That is really good. Sweet. And we're still gonna bread that and then fry it. That's exactly what we're gonna do. That's gonna so, take it to the next level. Yeah, so we're gonna take this sauce off now. So we're just gonna reuse this pan, so take that off. That's pretty much ready. All I'm gonna do to that is, when I saute the spinach, just add the cream back into it, a little squeeze of lemon. Perfect. Three, it's off, huh? Two, one. And we're gonna get our water on, which is hot water. We're gonna poach our eggs in here. Yes. So it's important to use quite a big pot. To this, all we're gonna add is some vinegar. Say that is four liters of water. I use maybe about 400 mils of uh, vinegar to that. So you need quite a bit. This is kind of one of the things that people forget. And then do you wanna get it like, boiling hard or do you want bring it, it up to the boil first and then turn it down to okay. a simmer i might actually turn finally right be up. able to poach an egg yeah you'll get there after man. all of these years <laughs> okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to fry shallow fry our fish cakes so we'll get our oil on up to temperature to about 180 degrees it's going to crumb our fish cakes now as i said earlier it's a little panne section flour eggs and breadcrumb I'm gonna do it twice just to keep it a little bit of, a little bit of texture to it as well. So we just shape our fish cakes, make them as big as a small. This could also be a nice little starter as well, but it's a perfect kind of brunch dish, I guess. Speaking of brunch, man, and um, and the COVID situation we're going through now. Yeah. How have you been spending most of your free time? I'm researching, man. I'm, I'm kind of reading a lot of books, keeping in touch with friends as well is very important, especially friends in the industry, fellow chefs who are struggling at the moment to find work. So it's important that we all kind of gel together and make sure everybody's going well. Speaking of like that knock-on effect though, like how has it affected some of your colleagues in the industry uh, with your mental health? I think it's important to be positive and you know, new businesses, new ideas, new opportunities that are gonna come along. And to be able to work on yourself, really, th during, during this time, and, and like you're saying, doing, doing a lot of reading, keeping that actual contact, doing FaceTime, or there's a yeah. couple of apps out right now, and, th yeah. and that actually really does help. It really does, yeah, it really does. I found that in the last couple of weeks, keeping in touch with not just friends, but family as well, especially for me. Like, most of my family are still back in Ireland, so I always keep talking to people, you know, because, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody's going through this same kind of situation we're all in this together so it's important that we um we all stick together and watch each other's backs you know ordinary people have been getting into their baking getting into their cooking yeah that's cool isn't you, it like i think a lot of people who you know don't usually do that yeah and now they've found a the time that they can do it they're probably you know having a great time and enjoying it and getting involved in food and getting the family enjoy it getting the kids in there you know that's it's right. so important you know we have kids we know like they love to get involved and be part yeah. of the process, you know what I mean? For me, I can't emphasize that enough how important it is, you know? So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm, I've crumbed them once, I'm gonna give them another little crumb. Yep. Back into the uh, egg again. Ooh, the double crumb. Double crumb. The double dip. Just so, we get, <laughs> just so we got that nice little texture. People that were going to restaurants and that are now cooking, do you think it's a positive? Because they, they learn to appreciate how difficult a lot of this stuff is. I can't say enough about local businesses and, and small businesses that are, you know, obviously struggling through this time, but when they do eventually reopen or a new owner takes them over, just always try and look after your locals, you know, and, and oh, your local businesses. All right, so I'm just gonna try one of these out here. Just gently ease that in. The sizzle. 
Wow. And how long do we leave it on each side? How long? Are um, we usually, I'll probably take like depending on the temperature. Usually about four minutes, I'd say. Get a nice golden kind of color on there. Wow, that's good. looking good. You see that starting to color already, which is good. How do you see us rebounding as an industry? Do you think that we'll go to really big establishments with really big operations, or do you think we're just going to come right down to small eateries? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, you think about how many big cafes, big restaurants there is in Melbourne, right? And for me, I think the big places will struggle when we first get back yep. because they're not going to be doing those numbers. So it's going to be a gradual process, right? Right. But I think the small businesses, I think they'll be the places that will really thrive. People will be gagging to get back out again because yep. they'll be oh, stuck absolutely. at home forever, right? Yeah. So it'll be like, as soon as it's over, it's like, right, let's go. And, you know, really support that because trying to make everything work again is going to be a drawn out process. Gonna put our lid on, just bring that up to the boil. Good, that's ticking away nicely. How much time do you want to fry these, Chef? Yeah, we're gonna give them probably another minute. I've turned the heat right down. So just wanna make sure that the, the center is hot. 10, 15 minutes of frying? I reckon, yeah, 10 minutes. 10 but minutes. Again, if you've got a deep fryer and you can control the temperature, it'll only take maybe five or six minutes. Yeah, right. Like crab donuts. Just strain a little bit of that liquid off. Turn that heat off. Just gonna get another couple of eggs. I'm gonna do four poached eggs. How do you feel about how the, the actual industry has reacted and gone takeaway? It's been the only option for a lot of places, which I think is a great idea. And you're also support, and you're supporting the business, you know? And you're like, supporting the business, of course, because you know once it does reopen, you're gonna be straight back there again. And you know, you're right. keeping that kind of relationship alive. All right, we're gonna do some poached eggs, Papa. Oh, I need to watch so this. So our water is boiled. I'm gonna turn that down to a little bit of a simmer. So bring it up to boil and then let it. Yeah, and then just let it take over a little bit. Hard boil and then back down again. Yeah, just a nice little simmer. Gotta watch this. So I got my eggs here. I'm gonna pop these straight in. You were at the Hardware Society. Or Hardware yeah, Society. Was, or, um, on Hardware Lane. So you know, I was always kind of involved in tapas and fine dining most of my career. When I had the baby was the most important thing because I had to change my lifestyle, right? Yeah. So I decided to go to the cafe scene. And if I was going to go to a cafe, I wanted to go to the best one, yeah, the busiest course. one, right? Yeah. How many covers were you guys doing? Breakfast, lunch, we'd do maybe 200, 250. It was like this How kind of kitchen seats? here. How many seats? And we had like 45 seats. And you guys were doing 200 Yeah, and we were churning them out, like great setting tables. Like it was just, it was a machine. So that was there like three years. So after the first year, once I got the hang of everything, the business just started booming. We were like number one in Urban Spray. Yeah, yeah, won heaps that. of uh, awards on TripAdvisor. You had a queue for. 45 yeah, minutes to an hour, it was around crazy. The corner down the street yeah, to come was... in for Bracky brunch. You know, it was a really good learning experience for me. I actually still keep in touch with the owners this day. They've actually moved to Barcelona. And, um, How many poached eggs you reckon? Oh man, <laughs> I lost count of that. Thousands. <laughs> that would have been crazy. Thousands. And then from there, I just stuck to the cafe scene and opened a few new cafes. Opened Mr. Mister. Yeah, we opened with a bang and we were full. Yeah, that's um, crazy. It was mental. How okay, many these, minutes? These, How many these minutes? are ready. What was that? was three minutes, I reckon, Papa. Oh, wow. Yeah? And they you rise gotta, to the you top. You gotta get this. Look at that. And they got a little bit of give in them. So they're gonna continue cooking. So we're gonna take that out. Perfection. So the vinegar is the key. It's the key. Nice runny yolk. And always use free range eggs as well. It makes such a difference. And they need to be fresh. And ideally, I would leave the eggs out um, at room temperature before you cook them just so they come up to like 30 degrees, they're easier to poach then. I'm gonna get rid of that. Yeah, I'll just use yeah. that pot then. Just let that cool down. I'll use that for the spinach. Hot, hot, coming through. Hot, hot, hot. Spicy hot. All right. All right, okay guys, so um, yeah, next step, we're gonna saute our spinach. Yep. Um, so we'll just get our pot again, just warm. We're gonna not add some butter in there. Melt that down a little bit. So we'll just get our butter nice and melted. A little swirl around that. Swerve on. And then we're just gonna add our spinach to that. Just gonna let that steam down. Seems like a lot of spinach, but it cooks down. We'll okay. just get some seasoning. How much do they spend on this dish for four? This would cost less than $15. You could feed six people yep. for under 15 bucks, which is pretty good. And you don't really need too many high-tech gadgets or anything? Like no, absolutely, no. It's all about controlling your temperatures. It's real simple processes. I'm just keeping an eye on things and try not to do too much. Turn the heat up on that now. Okay, so the spinach, I'm just going to add our cream sauce that we made before. So this is like a kind of braised spinach. It's got all that lovely flavor in there. So the spinach is quick. So like Real you just, quick. you just low Sweat heat. Sweat it down a little bit. 
Kind of bring and then it we're down. We're just going to bring then... that up to temperature, and it's pretty much ready. So this is great accompaniment with meat as well. It doesn't have to be fish. Like this with lamb is really really nice. Or chicken you can add a little bit of mustard to that just Beauty. to bring it up to the next level. But I'm just going to heat that up gently now. Okay. With our plate, we're just going to dress the plate now very shortly. These are still pretty warm, but you can keep them warm in the oven while all this, all this other stuff's going on. Okay. I'm just going to finish that with a little squeeze of lemon juice. It's a little bit of acid. Just lifts it to the next level. That's looking good. Yeah. So again. Keep that real nice green color of the spinach. You don't want to overcook it. Literally takes one minute, right? A little bit of the sauce. Lots of flavor. Yeah. Flavor country. That's what I'm all about, man. You yes. know that. Intensified flavors and things that work really well together. Let's take our fish carry. Put that on top. And our poached egg. You can be a little bit chef here and just trim it up. Just pop that on top. Let's put a fresh lemon on there. And just a little bit of pepper. And that's it. Wow. This all nice can be done meat. under 15 bucks. Get but the basically gush. Basically what you want is you just want that to be nice and runny. Get the gush. And you just open oh. that up. There you go. Crab fish cake for six people under 15 bucks. Now we got to do that, don't we? Uh, and, uh, oh. <laughs> we'll come back to it. We'll be right. Because whenever I see you, it's usually. Yeah, that's right. And right now it's like. It's like, shit. Uh, touchy. Uh, can't be touchy feel. Amazing. So that's us. Bon appetit. Buen provecho. John Paul Dargan making the crab cakes. No frills, heaps of flavor. Eat some. Let's get stuck in. <laughs> this is my favorite part right <laughs> here. Watch this. I'm in flavor country right now. It's almost as if you put mushroom through there, but I think that's a lot of the sauce. That's the spinach, the earthiness. Mm. The crab's very subtle. Yeah. Textures as well. This is yeah. incredible. It all works mm. pretty well together mm. as well. This is Mind Society Studios with John Paul Dargan bringing you the COVID crab cake. Enjoy. That's it, enjoy. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Buen provecho. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. How do you say bon appetit? Bon appetit, you say enjoy your meal and then. How do you say bon appetit in French? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stupid. How do you say bon appetit in French? <laughs> 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 burro. What are we doing borracho, here? Borracho, man. What are we borracho? <laughs>